going to completely shift gears. The Senate's bipartisan gang of eight, led by Senator Marco Rubio, well, they released their long-awaited immigration reform bill today. In brief, it's heavy on border security, provides for legalization, raises the limit for brainiacs coming into the country, guarantees electronic verification for businesses. But I think the key point is, if the entrepreneurial benefits of immigration are scored dynamically, this reform dramatically grows the economy, and it might even solve our budget deficit along the way. Here now from Washington, we have Roy Beck, he's president of Numbers USA, Heather Higgins, and Steve Moore of the Wall Street Journal editorial board are joining me on set. Steve Moore, studies have shown that if you look at the benefits of enhanced immigration of both the brainiacs, the tradespeople, and the lower income people, by the time they get through building business and paying taxes, it's a huge net plus for our economy. Do you believe that? Oh, I do. You know, there's a new study out by Douglas Holtz Aiken, who used to run the uh, Congressional Budget Office, so he's, he has some gravitas on these issues. He says we could actually reduce the uh, federal budget deficit over the next 20 years by $2.5 trillion by letting in more immigrants especially more skill-based immigration. You know, the other part of this equation I think it's really important for people to remember is if you look at our birth rate in the United States, we're actually below replacement level fertility. We don't want to be Japan. We don't want to be Europe. We're going to need more people, more force young is workers. Shrinking. That's the labor force, the labor force is shrinking. Is shrinking. That's so, holding back economic. We and, need bodies. And by the way, the, the people who have the here. highest uh, labor force participation rate are immigrants. So, yeah, I think it's a big benefit both fiscally, economically, and, and by the way, it's really important politically Politically, for the Republicans to get this done, too. They only got 20% of the minority vote, and I think immigration was one reason. All right, uh, Roy Beck, your point. Do you agree with this? Using the benefits, <laughs> using the math, using the labor force, that there's a lot of economic growth out there if we allow the immigrants to be legalized and let them enter legally as well. Immigration grows the economy because it's extra people, but what does it do for the average American? And it does not help them. I, I disagree with just about everything was just said. Uh, the fact is, is we don't have a shrinking labor force. Our population is growing rapidly. Uh, we, we will, even if we had no immigration, the population would grow till the end of this, this century. We have 20 million Americans who want a full-time job and can't find one. And we have many more millions who have to of Americans who have totally left the labor market. Now, now, this is no time to be bringing in more foreign workers. But why not? And I'm not just talking let, about the but brainiacs. Let me just ask you, if you acknowledge, you, you acknowledge a couple things. You acknowledge that more immigrants will promote economic growth, which is what Steve Moore is saying. I want to go back to this labor force. Every month we have the jobs numbers, and almost every month the labor force participation rate comes down. In other words, people are leaving the labor force. They may be going on food stamps. They may be going on unemployment. <laughs> they may be going on Social Security disability. They may be going all the above. In other words, we don't have the growth of employment to create the jobs and create the growth of the economy that but we, we need. To, That's we what, to, it sounds like you're agreeing with that, <laughs> but you no. just don't like it. Well, no, we have to know why that's happening. These people are leaving the labor force for, for one thing. They can't find a job. There's 20 million people in front of them. They're trying to jo find a job. They can't find one. Secondly, for, for 30 years of very high immigration, quadrupled levels of legal immigration, we've seen the jobs for Americans with no more than a high school degree well, lose their real wages by 20 percent. It is true, Roy, that we've seen, you know, the last couple decades, we actually saw dramatic increases in immigration. And in the 1980s and 90s were the biggest boom period for the American economy we ever had. You no, know, we, we created we 40 million new jobs, Roy. And one other point that I think you're missing on this, you're right. The average person might ask, well, what do we need more workers for when we've got 18 million people who are unemployed? And I think one answer to that is immigrants create jobs, Larry. They but, create jobs. They but, create jobs because they're highly entrepreneurial. They're Steve, more they, likely to create businesses than they, they, they create jobs. And, they, for, they, and also, they, Roy, you know this, they fill vital niches in the labor force, a lot of the work that Americans won't no, do. No, no. There's, there's, except for field work and agriculture, every single occupation is majority native born Americans. No, there's no wait job. a second. Electrical, no, engin electrical engineers, by the way, tradesmen. There's, look, the, part of this bill, fortunately, raises the limits on what I call the brainiacs, which I think is absolutely where we have both need and people want to come in here. Heather Higgins, you want to weigh in on this debate? Yeah, no, and on the H. Uh, uh, when B visas, we go from 65,000 to 110, which is so still two chances. Not enough. <laughs> right. no. And it exactly. to one. I think, I think the inclination a, is to have, uh, when you look at a bill that's architected essentially as a deal between big unions, big labor, and big business, blessed by big government 
some of us are inclined to be inherently suspicious of it. But by <laughs> and large, so. <laughs> this is directionally right in terms of economic growth. And I think that if you're a small businessman, you're actually probably pretty happy about this because particularly friends of mine who are like contractors, they, they want immigration reform because they're tired of competing with people who are operating on a cash economy basis um, entirely under the table who don't why have to do the same hiring, licensing etc. Why aren't they hiring these 20 million people? They're setting lines. Because they're the not. Is, the wages have been driven down so low in so many of these positions that it's very difficult to get some people to pull in. Nonetheless, every time the, the Obama case. Every time the Obama administration does an audit in which they have to fire all their illegal aliens, there are Americans lined around the block. There have been no problems. I want to raise one point. I want to raise one anything. point. Doug Holtz Eakin, okay, who runs the American Action Forum, as Steve Moore said, he's a smart guy. He ran the Congressional Budget Office. He told me we should have about 500,000 legal new immigrants per year. And if we do that, the economic growth rate will rise by one percentage point each year for about 10 years. And by the years. way, let me add something. But what I'm saying is, what does it do to the American says, worker? We, we, not only need, we not only need to legalize the workers here in this uh, Marco Rubio reform right. bill, but down the road, we've got to add a half a million people a year. That will make the labor force break even or somewhat higher because that will take and care Larry, of the decline of birth rate. Something in his, and that right. lowers the budget deficit by no. 2. But there's something else. Dollars. There's something else. He also finds that the actual per capita income rises. So not just the entire uh, well, economy he, grows, he, but the economy grows on it, a per capita basis. But it does I believe, happen, Roy, Stephen, that this is our biggest single three, competitive oh, advantage in the global yeah. economy today yeah. is that we have access you, you to the best that, and brightest and workers, working people in the world. It's a huge advantage against China, Japan, right. Germany, these yeah, other nations. Three, I gotta go. We're gonna listen, leave it three, three, we'll three to, to one is three we'll, to one we'll makes it hard for the unemployed American have a chance here. Take a look at this thing. All I know is. The American labor force is not growing. <laughs> that is a true. bad thing. And if the labor force doesn't grow, the economy can't grow. Anyway, Steve Moore, Roy Beck, thanks very much. Now, let's get to this big stock rally today. Dow jumped 158 points, erasing more than yeah, half of yesterday's deep sell-off. Question, though, will the shock of the Boston bombing and the deep plunge in gold lead to a long-awaited market correction? I don't necessarily believe that, but I've got to ask that question, and we will discuss it up next on Cutlow. After yesterday's huge drop, stocks have rallied back. Dow gained 158 points in today's session. I remain an optimist, and as I said earlier, I especially like the plunge in gold and the strength in the dollar. But I must ask, will the horrible events of the Boston bombing and the unexpected plunge in gold open the door to a long-awaited market correction? Let's talk. We have Michael Santelli. It's Santoli. I'm sorry, Michael. Senior columnist with Yahoo Finance and Jim Paulson, investment strategist at Wells Capital Management. Heather Higgins, herself a former Wall Street portfolio manager, is still here with me. Mike Santelli, um, is this the correction? Does this horrible Boston murder situation and the gold thing open the door to the long-awaited correction? I actually don't think those two things would be the decisive uh, things that would open that door, actually. I think we may have to be on alert for some kind of a correction, mostly because of, you know, we had a whiff of some kind of deflationary stuff going around in the air yesterday. I don't think that's a big thing in the future, but I think we are at the point in the year we get the same year-to-date gain the past couple of years, and you had a softening up of the macro. What kind of deflationary data. stuff, by the way? Uh, you had the CPI today that obviously was a little bit light, and yesterday just the, the, the movements in all the asset markets. Now, by the way, I think it made a whole lot of sense that the market regained what it did today, simply because after after yesterday's kind of liquidation type activity, you didn't see any whales wash up on the beach. It didn't seem like anybody was trapped. It didn't seem like anything bigger than it was. And I happen to agree that gold losing a lot of value is not in itself something to worry about. In fact, it's I think anything, it's a great sign. It's I a sign the uncertainty trade has finally yeah, waned. The end of the world trade is over. And Jim Paulson, let me just add one thing. Besides my liking for the gold plunge, I also like the fact that crude oil prices are slipping, mm -hmm. and so are other commodities, which are tax cuts for the economy. And maybe help profits. I, I agree, Larry. I mean, I, to the point of a correction, 
I think the things that are against that is I don't see where there's, you know, uh, just enthusiasm or euphoria in the market right now. And I don't see the kind of things that would shut it down, like rising gas prices mm -hmm. at the pump or, or a, a, a big rise in bond yields, uh, for example, or a big spike in inflation in general that cuts real incomes. We just don't have that. Today's mediocre numbers. I mean, housing was kind of me. Year on year, housing's great, but it's kind of mediocre. Manufacturing today was pretty mediocre. Um, the Fed's not going to move on those kinds of numbers. They're not going to change their view. I don't think so, but I, I, I really believe there's a strong sentiment, and Mike brought it up about the, the uh, sell in May and go away idea. I don't think we're going to have a correction, just my gut tells I hate it, until that. after you we may get be past right. that you, you always are right. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I read your columns and barons all the time, but I hate this little ditty thing, sell in May and go yeah. away. I just hate that. Well, here's, here's, the, the, here's the thing, thing that the of the economy. And I'm very, here's the thing that argues against that. Last <laughs> summer, the trap was the thinking we were in for a third year in a row when Europe was going to really lay us low. Right. And it didn't go as deep. Now, you had the correction, but it didn't go as deep. It was 9%, not 18 or 15 or anything like that. So maybe the trap now is to think, okay, the script has been written and we're going to have to have a spring swoon again. I don't know. i got to get Heather in here, former portfolio manager. Give us your take on the stock market. My view is always longer. And uh, so we didn't. We never were, were active traders. And so I'm encouraged by the, the decline in commodity prices. Right. That is always just such a healthy thing. Unlike you, I'm not a perpetual optimist. <laughs> uh, and I do really worry about central bank policies and what it means long term. I understand that the QE dollars are, are just sitting there and not getting into the economy. But longer term, I'm nervous. But hopefully, we will work through it and, um, and we'll have a little bit more sanity. And, and this will be a beginning of a good thing. How high is the, uh, let's take the S&P. How high is the S&P going to go? Well, I've been on record since year in saying it could touch 1,700 this year, Larry, and I still think that's, that's reasonable. I think the driving force is twofold here this year. Growth is coming in faster than expected a year in. We're growing more like three in the first quarter rather than two. Do you I, think that'll last? I think it will. You really do I all do. year? I do. You, got, you know, you got smart guys like Mark Zandi, okay, saying 3% yeah. in the first quarter, but then it trickles down to 2%, 1.5%, and then maybe next year. You well, think it's going to I don't out. think it's going to be straight three, 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 three. But uh, I think first quarter could be greater than three, and mm -hmm. we might be less than the second and up. But I think we're going to average more like three percent. I think we've we've got a revised or, or, or reaccelerating emerging world. We've calmed down Europe. It's no longer freezing people that you know like it's going to blow up and take right. down the global cover. We still got full out monetary stimulus. What's your favorite investment? I, I think right now the manufacturing stocks, the industrials and materials. You've been sleeping. I think commodities make a little rally in the second half. You're nodding your head, Mike Sento. Well, I, I'm nodding my head that that's where the value is in the market. I mean, I think one of the things that's made people uneasy is the fact that it's been these very steady, kind of bond equivalent type stocks, the consumer staples and the healthcare and the utilities that have been driving things, which is very rational. I mean, it's basically saying ultra strong corporate bond market, and we're buying the stuff that is equivalent almost Don't to corporate bonds. Don't we need China bonds. to get a rally in commodities? You probably do. I'm really going to. You happen. probably do. China's not exactly collapsing, but 7.7 percent .7 is not 10 or 12 percent. Yeah. That's right. No, so you need a spark. I mean, it can't just be, oh, it's not collapsing. It has to actually look like it's it's finding its footing. I, I just disagree about it. I think the yeah. dollar's going to come down a little bit, Larry, in the second half and might help commodity prices. Whoa, okay. Dollar <laughs> coming down. I hate to see that. I want King Dollar. Mike Santoli and Jim Paulson, thanks very much. We're going to go back to Boston for another live update. That's next up on Cudlow.